Well, inspiration to write music can happen at any time. It can come from any situation. Um, I mean, it just flows around you all the time and, and you just, you're connected to it. And the, I guess the point is to just really tune into it and listen for it. Um, I hear music everywhere in everything. A song may start as a very simple uh, sound that we hear inside of us. Just a simple vibration. And then it grows and we start hearing the expanse getting bigger and bigger. I got involved in music at a pretty young age. I was about five when I started music lessons. I had piano and it really wasn't my instrument. We didn't connect all that much. And I moved on to violin and finally I was about eight and I found the flute and that was indeed my instrument. Now my folks thought that the band director at school was teaching everyone how to read and how to play and everything and they didn't sign me up for private lessons on the side which is what was supposed to happen. And you know, all the other kids were having private lessons and I would simply show up at band practice and hear what they were playing and play it. I was playing by ear and now we're all looking at the sheet music okay and I'm, my eyes are moving from left to right on the sheet music and I think I'm reading music and I never really was. But I managed to work myself up to first chair flute without anyone ever knowing I couldn't read. And you know, I went on back later in life and tried to learn how to read but it just, it wasn't for me. I connected to the flute. Uh, playing by ear, that's how we connected. And I went on to play several instruments in high school in the band and symphony. I played flute, piccolo, bagpipes, oboe, and then in college played in a lot of different bands. I played guitar, I played piano and keyboards, and again, of course, always the flute, and sang, and I was in all kinds of different bands, 60s bands and rock and roll bands, and you know, just whatever I had to do, and I was playing out about six nights a week at times and even did a short tour with one group. When I was in elementary school, I had a music teacher named Alice Martin, and she was a wonderful lady and a great musician. She recognized right away that I had talent in music, and so even during the off hours when school wasn't in session, she would come by on the nights and on the weekends, and my parents supported her and let her do this. She would take me to operas and symphonies and movies that uh, were musicals like The Sound of Music. Um, and, and just so many influences and so many great performances and so much great entertainment at such a young age, it just couldn't help but influence me. And I, I think I'll always be indebted to Alice Martin for turning me on to the musical world and and letting me see that I might be able to have a place in that. I don't think that there was an instrument that I didn't play at one time or another, or at least try, when I was growing up. I started in school, in elementary school, with band instruments, um, and I would change those every year. I never stuck with the same instrument for very long. I, I think I started with a clarinet, and I moved on to trumpet, and trombone and tuba and different brass and then I went to drums I think before I finally went to middle school. But I was never happy with having just one instrument to play or one way to express my music. I always felt like I wanted to have a larger palette to choose from and so when, when synthesizers came out and they started to become popular uh, for composers and music, it was just, I, I, I knew that that was the direction that I had to go in because that's what I had always dreamed of being able to do, to play all the different parts and to create my own orchestras, my own productions, my own uh, musical adventures. I met Randy in high school and I was 16, he was 17, I had just moved to Texas 
and I was extremely shy and introverted. And I signed up for classes in the theater department. And he had already been involved in the theater for a lot of years. And he was not in any way, shape, or form shy. And uh, we met basically in the hallway of the theater department when I first moved to Texas. So here's this beautiful girl that I've been admiring for weeks. I don't know her name. And she's walking down the theater hallway. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, gosh, I've just, I've got to say something to this girl now. If I don't, I'm going to lose my chance. Um, and so, and I didn't even know what I was going to say. So I looked up and I said, hey, you. Hey, you. How could I have said that? Oh, no, I blew it. I absolutely blew it. Well, I didn't want anyone to know I was terribly shy. So when, when I'm walking down the hallway and I hear this, hey, you, I was like, hmm. and I turned around and looked, and here he was sitting there with, with these other older kids. You know, he was in the next class up. And, and I just kind of kept walking. He can't possibly be talking to me. And he said, hey, you, do you speak Venusian? Okay, well, I couldn't turn down a challenge like that, so I just turned around and I said, why, yes, I do. And I walked away. He was fascinated. Susan's photos have a poetry about them, and she captures with light uh, what we try to capture with sound. Susan's photos have so much joy in them. I remember when Pamela first brought over a computer and showed me the slide. She made a slideshow on the computer and she ran our music behind it. And the first time I saw it, we were just absolutely floored. We were stunned at how well Susan's photos and our music went together. We just looked at each other and we just, we knew without words that this was going to be the direction we wanted this project to take. Deep Still Blue is about the ocean. But as with all 2002 records, it's a metaphor for a deeper spiritual meaning. Deep Still Blue is also about the love and admiration and respect that we have for all life. And what better way to present that idea than with the ocean, with all of its diverse beauty and diverse forms of life. Deep Still Blue was actually in the very beginning stages of writing an album when our little girl became seriously ill and we spent eight days in the hospital and she required surgery to save her life and there we were just balancing on the head of a pen not knowing if we were going to get to keep her or if we were going to lose her and there were some very dark days and that was the beginning of the album and a lot of these songs were written as lullabies to her and Others are written from her eyes, from her point of view. So I think in a lot of ways, it's her album. But it's more than just um, celebrating her life. The album is kind of a celebration of life in general and how precious it is. That experience significantly affected our music and our lives. The most important thing I think that we learned from that experience is how fragile life is and how important it is that we live our lives to the fullest every day. As an artist, Randy is absolutely gifted. He can hear an entire production before the first note is ever laid down. He's already worked out the keys and the melodies and the rhythms and how they're all woven together. It's truly amazing how he can just create these gigantic compositions in his head. Pamela is an amazing musician. She's what recording engineers and record producers call a one-take wonder. She comes into the studio, she picks up her instrument in front of the microphone, and she nails her part on the first pass. Excellent performance. And if you're on the other end of that, if you're on the recording end of that, you better hope that you've pushed the record button because if not, you may have missed the best performance. Working with Randy is, it's, it's a blast. I mean, how many people get to work with their best friend? I mean, and it's, it's wonderful. And I've been asked by people, how in the world can you live together and work together and be around each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week? And 
really it's it it's it's easy and it's a blessing and it's wonderful to be working with the other half of yourself 2002 albums do take a long time to create mainly because of the complexity that's involved in creating them Pamela and I both use only our own two voices for all of the voice work that's done on our albums so there may be songs where we pull uh, pull the tracks up on a mixer and may have 80 tracks of vocals that we have to go through it's a very long and complicated process but the reward in the end is huge for us because the because the production is the way that we envisioned it